Good morning and welcome to another um, exciting edition of uh, Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 129, uh, part two of uh, rebuilding the one person uh, sneak boat. And just to prove that uh, we really, really are going to finish it this episode, uh, take a look at this footage. Well, there it is, our one man boat. We replaced the bottom, we replaced all the ribs. We reinforced the sides. We've uh, re-epoxied the inside. That's uh, what the book boat is going to look like uh, when it's finished. If you want to see uh, how we did that, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do next. But we're not going to get anything done unless we do what? That's right. Let's turn to and get to work. Last week we got the uh, floor installed and we got the bottom fared. Um, this week, the first thing we got to do is work on putting the um, ribs back in. I'm going to fight the temptation to uh, improve the design of these uh, ribs. Instead, I'm going to be faithful to the original design, which is kind of a two-part uh, deal. Uh, they got this one inch board that's horizontal and then these the side braces uh, go in there like that I can't tell what kind of wood they they use to uh, make these ribs but it's very light and it almost looks like pine so I'm going to use I'm going to use pine. I got this good pine here. So let me uh, size it. The first thing I have to do is uh, thickness plane it down to one inch. walking the thing into position. And as I'm walking into place, I can uh, I can tweak those angles. I can uh, find, fine tune the angles uh, using the uh, spindle sander, but the main uh, cutting, I'm using uh, the saw. ribs will be held in place by epoxy but I'll get my clamping pressure for the epoxy from uh, some inch and a quarter deck screws I'll cover the countersinks with um, with epoxy also I'll be using the uh, Two different mixes here to install the ribs, the uh, floor ribs. Um, this batch right here is going to be mixed with sawdust and this will be a filler, filler material. It'll be consistency of peanut butter and On this side over here, this will be the glue to uh, stick the ribs down to the uh, floor. I'll show you the center one. It's probably the easiest to uh, 
can see. I've already marked where the uh, brace is going to be. I'm just going to pour some of this uh, glue neatly down the center here. And I'm going to butter, and that's what it's called too, buttering. I'm going to butter some of this uh, this glue slash filler on the ends. Okay, I mentioned this before, but unlike regular glue, epoxy you don't want to uh, clamp it real hard. Uh, you get a because it'll squeeze all the epoxy right out. Yeah, I got the horizontal braces uh, put in place and patched up some nail holes and stuff. Next thing I've got to fabricate are these uh, upright ribs here. Well, I'm doing about what you'd expect here. Making a paper template. And then I'll use this template to uh, cut out my stock. I use this cordless jigsaw for everything. Well, I got all those uh, side ribs in. Uh, each one has to be custom fit because of the curving and uh, converging uh, sides. But I got my sander set up right over there. So next operation will be take each one of those uh, side ribs and smooth it down so it fits in its uh, custom location. So let's get to it. Here's what we up, we're up against on these uh, upright uh, braces. Uh, you can see here that you know it's the template took care of that curve so it fits real good over there. But now let's go over on the other side. You can put your hand behind it there. And of course that's, that's caused by the various compound angles here. We got, uh, you know, this is curved, this, this is curved here like scooped out. And then up here it's angling in. So it's curved up and angled in. And everything is predicated on this alignment of this thing. I want it to be aligned straight, which means that right here I'm going to have to put an angle crossed here, and the best way to do that is on the sander. Now you see that's got it much closer. A little touch up. So all you do is fiddle and finally you can see the big angle I had to put on that thing. Just keep fiddling and pretty soon it fits and you can move on.
Let me show you the deal I'm working on now. When I, uh, when I attach these uh, side braces, I'm going to have to be drilling screws in from this side. And the dilemma is that these sides are only about a half an inch thick. So that means that the screws I use, which are these uh, inch and a quarter deck screws, have to come out no more than a half an inch on the other side. So these uh, holes that I'm putting in here, these countersinks, have to be uh, perfectly set. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the screw, uh, putting it in the countersink, and actually drilling it in and then seeing how far it comes out. So I can see here uh, that I need to make this countersink uh, deeper. And I'll do that for all, I got 12 of these holes to do. I'll do that for every single hole so that there's no mistake. Okay, I'm uh, putting these in the same way I did the vertical braces, or the horizontal braces. A little bit of glue and I'm buttering the uh, part that meets the the boat side. This is important because as you can see the boat side here is not uh, even and this, uh, this glue is incredibly strong. I mean, it's spooky, it's so strong. Got to kind of work fast because this uh, pot life on this is, uh, if, if you keep it in a container like this, it hardens much quicker than if you lay it down, if you lay it out. I mean, and when I say quicker, I mean a lot quicker. See what this does, this fills up any gaps. And this stuff, when it dries, is stronger than wood. They make stitch and glue boats with it. They actually take uh, pieces of plywood and stick them together using this stuff. These are critical screws here. These are the ones that, if I got my measurements wrong, they're going to go right through the side of the boat. And in boat building, that would be considered bad. And I got to work fast because my uh, my fillers my fillers curing. But I got to go around. Uh, to all these holes and for the countersinks and fill them in. I don't want to leave a lot of this stuff on the surface because it's real hard to uh, real hard to sand. I don't know why. This is the stuff with the sawdust in it. You'd think it'd be easy to sand, but it isn't. Well, it looks like it's going to be a good, uh, good fix. It looks a little rough now because uh, you know it's got all that different colors and different woods. 
uh, but it'll look uh, much better when it's painted. Um, the ribs went in perfectly. Okay, the next step is uh, I gotta wait a couple hours for the uh, glue to dry or cure and then we'll do a little sanding and then we're gonna coat the entire inside with uh, epoxy and then a step after that we'll, we'll sand the epoxy some and then we can put some uh, paint down. <coughs> well, I got the epoxy down what I'm doing now is sanding I don't know if you can see it in the camera but it's got it it's kind of shiny um, I gotta knock that shine off of it and knock all the bubbles out and you know clean it up for painting after get it all sanded down then we'll put a coat of primer on it here's a takeaway this is a 120 quid grit of sandpaper and in only a few minutes it's totally clogged with that uh, epoxy now instead of cussing this thing just get your 50 cents worth of extra sandpaper and when this clogs up throw it away and put some new sandpaper on I think I may have just come up with the uh, the uh, most obvious takeaway ever when your sandpaper clogs up put new sandpaper on aren't you glad you watched <laughs> Well, at this point you look at it and you think, gee, I got all the shine off, must have it, uh, have it licked. Watch what happens when I I'll, uh, wipe it with a rag. See how that shine starts to come back? Here's a close-up of what I'm talking about. You can see this is really looks like it's been sanded well and shines off and everything. Now watch what happens when I wipe it with a rag. So now I'll go uh, I'll go around and hit all the the shiniest places with some uh, hand sanding. See how bright it is? You know, there are guys that make these boats, probably made a thousand of them, and so they know all the tricks. And there's probably some implement paint or barn paint or uh, some kind of paint they use to paint them. But I don't know what that is. You know, that's tribal knowledge. So, what I'm going to use is actual, uh, actual boat paint. And this is the color code here. It's Battleship Gray, but I'm going to, I think it's a little dark, so I'm going to thin it out with a little bit of white to uh, lighten it up some. I don't like to paint, and I think for me, the only thing worse than painting is watching somebody paint. So, but I think uh, this is the uh, this is the primer coat here. I think we're going to see a pretty cool transition as we uh, as we get some paint down. Okay, here's what the uh, first coat of primer looks like. Uh, I got to wait four hours. Uh, before I put the second coat on but okay we'll come back okay I'll come back when uh, we put our second coat on I have uh, totally changed my mind on the uh, two coats of primer I don't think it needs it uh, two coats of primer is really uh, recommended if you have bare wood but we didn't have any bare wood our wood was either painted or uh, coated with epoxy this is the color I've selected. It's called Battleship Gray. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but I think it's a little dark. So I'm going to mix some... Uh, I'm going to mix some white with it. 
start lighting it up a little bit. I'll be putting two coats of this uh, gray color in here, but I'll do that offline. I think everything else we do from this point on is just fiddling. Well, there it is, our one-man boat. We replaced the bottom. We replaced all the ribs. We reinforced the sides. We uh, re-epoxied the inside. And we're currently in the process of uh, painting. That does it for another Memphis Monday. Memphis Monday 129. Uh, rebuilding the uh, one person uh, uh, boat, part two. You know, I think uh, we turned this uh, pile of scrap, and there's five times more laying over there in the corner, into the boat you just saw a minute or so ago. Um, so, this is one of those kind of projects I like. I don't like uh, bu boat building anymore, but I don't mind repairing them. Uh, I like to take piles of scrap and turn them into uh, something useful again. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, comment and tweet and Facebook and share on Facebook. That's, that's always good. And... Uh, I guess that's it. Nope, nope, I just remembered something else. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.